I take refuge in Allah from that devil because of his impertinence, ignorance and insolence has been thrown out of the kingdom of mercy of Allah. I begin in the name of Allah, he is of absolute, perfect divinity, sovereignty and eternity. He is Rahman, his love and mercy reaches to each and every living creature in the entire universe. And his Rahim, his extra beneficence, is reserved exclusively for the believers and the good doers. Salamun alaikum. This is the part three of the series on Hajj. In part one, we talked about the rituals and the spiritual aspects of Hajj. In part two, we had an overview of the Prophet's mosque. And in part three, we'll be concentrating on the overview of the Kaaba in Makkah. Makkah is officially known as Makkah al-Mukarramah, the blessed Makkah. It is one place where it does not need advertising to attract any pilgrims or tourists. Whenever we look at a holiday, the venue or the resort is the primary attraction. And the facilities that go around it, the accommodation, the transportation are all secondary. Whereas with Kaaba, it's the complete opposite. You will never see an advert saying, come and visit the Kaaba. Yes, what we do see is adverts advertising the facilities around the Kaaba, whether it is accommodation, whether it is the airline packages, etc. Kaaba is one attraction, if you like, that does not need advertising. It always attracts visitors all by itself. At the minimum now, during the season of Hajj, it will attract three million pilgrims and many more have to be turned away. It is one venue on earth where there is constant circumambulation, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 and a quarter days a year. And that tawaf, that circumambulation does not stop for any royalty, does not stop for any cleaning, does not stop for any changing of the clothes on the Kaaba. The only time it stops is five times a day where obligatory the Waji prayers are recited. What is the meaning of the word Kaaba? Kaaba has got three meanings. The first one means it's an elevated place. It's a place of respect, prestige and sanctity. And that Kaaba it certainly is. The second meaning, it could be a cube. A cube is a 3D solid rectangular where the width, the length and the height are of the same dimensions. Technically, the Kaaba, when it was first built and until today, it is not a cube in that those three dimensions are not the same, but it is a cuboid, a rectangular solid. The third meaning could also mean a foot. In Surah Al-Maida, when the process of wudu is explained, we are told we must wipe our feet, we must wipe the kabain. So kabain here meaning the feet, so it could also mean the foundations. And Kaaba therefore could mean either an elevated place, a cube or the foundation. Question is normally asked, why do we have to go to Makkah to do the tawaf? Why can't I build a replica? right in my own locality, to the exact dimensions, and then people can just do the circumambulation around it. We will avoid all the crowd, we will avoid all the expenses. And the answer is threefold. First of all, the ritual of Tawaf, as we saw, is just one of the many rituals. So by having a local Kaaba, if you like, will not complete all the rituals. Secondly, as we shall see, the foundations of the holy structure of the Kaaba was laid by the angels. If we were to build a replica, it would be man-made and it would not be divinely inspired. Thirdly, exactly vertically opposite the Kaaba, in the skies, there is another equivalent house called Baytul Ma'amur. This is where the angels circumambulant around this place as humans do on earth. And it is said since the time of creation, every time 
70,000 angels will circumambulate around Baytul Ma'amur. They would go away and they would not have a chance to come back as then other 70,000 angels would come for the circumambulation. And this would go on for a full time until the day of judgment. Therefore, it is only at Kaaba where we have the direct vertical connection between the Kaaba and the Baytul Ma'amur. And that is why, until today, there is an airspace exclusion vertically above the Kaaba. We can have helicopters, we can have aeroplanes going around the Kaaba, but they will not cross that vertical line above the Kaaba. Let us now look at the Kaaba during the time of Prophet Ibrahim and Prophet Ismail. The question that is often asked is who built the Kaaba? The first answer is that the foundations of the Kaaba were laid down by the angels. The second one says once the foundations have been laid down, it was Prophet Adam and the angels who together built the walls above the ground on the foundations. The third version says after the foundations have been laid down by the angels, it was only Prophet Adam who built the walls above the ground. Whatever the case might be, it was an angelic foundation and it was also a divinely foundation and built on by the infallible. There is no record of dimensions that were built during the time of Prophet Ibrahim, neither is the record of the material used, but we can presume it was the stones around the mountains in Mecca. There are records of previous prophets who have been seen to circumambulate around the Kaaba. But over time, over hundreds of years, either maybe because of the elements of the weather, those walls got eroded, or they may have been destroyed by people. But certainly, by the time of Prophet Ibrahim and Prophet Ismail, that area above the ground was now flattened and there were no walls to symbolize where the Kaaba was. So during the time of Prophet and Ibrahim, we are now talking about 4,000 years ago. It was this Prophet Ibrahim and his son Prophet Ismail who rebuilt the Kaaba on the existing foundation. We knew they rebuilt on existing foundations and not new foundations because we are told in the Quran in two places. In the first one in Surah Ibrahim, chapter 14, verse 3, 7 in part, in which Prophet Ibrahim is talking to Allah in which he says, O our Lord, I have settled some of my children in a valley that cannot be cultivated, meaning the Kaaba, but it is close to your sacred house. So Prophet Ibrahim knew when he came to the valley of Mecca or Bakka as it was called at the time, that there was a sacred house or sacred foundation already present there. Second in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2, verse 1 to 7 in part, Allah says, remember the time when Ibrahim and Ismail were raising the foundations of the house. Allah talks about raising the foundations and not building the foundations, meaning those foundations were already there previously from the time of Prophet Adam and Prophet Ibrahim was simply raising on those foundations. So the Kaaba as we see today above ground is basically a rectangular piece of four walls and a crescent shaped of a lower height. The wall where the door now is, it's called the eastern wall. So the one opposite it would be the western wall. And the wall where is the crescent, the arch, that is the northern wall. So the one opposite would be the southern wall. In the old times, the dimensions were not measured by feet or meters or inches or centimeters. They were measured by a unit called cubit. A cubit essentially was a distance from the elbow to the top of the middle finger. So there was a various cubit dimension depending on the average size of the person at the time. So there was an Arabic cubit, a Roman cubit, a Greek cubit, etc. 
The Arabic qubit at the time was one qubit was approximately 0.48 of a meter. So it's roughly half a meter. So when Prophet Ibrahim started building the walls around the foundations, the walls at the time were approximately 15 meters on the eastern and the western side. This corresponded to 31 and 32 qubits. So they were not exactly the same, but they were almost identical. On the northern and the southern walls, it is now about 10 meters when Prophet Ibrahim built it. So we had a simple rectangle, 15 meters by 10 meters. And they raised the height to 9 cubits, which is about 4.3 meters. So 4.3 meters roughly is about twice the height of an average man. At the time, it was just a rectangle. There was no crescent as we see today. And there was no roof as we see today. So it was an open rectangular wall. Also, there were two openings at ground level. Where the door is today on the eastern wall is in exactly that position where the door opening was, but it was not raised as it is now, it was at a ground level. But there was also another door when it was first built, and that is right opposite the eastern wall where the door is now. There was another opening there on the western wall. These were just openings, there was no doors at the time. So people could just walk in from the eastern wall at ground level, walk through straight across 10 meters to the western opening on the western wall. And the materials that were used for building these walls were simply the stones. And there were lots of stones around Bakka at the time, because until today, the area of Makkah is surrounded by hills and there's lots of stones around it. We now move on hundreds of years onwards and we come to a time 200 years before Hijrah. It was at this time when one of the kings from Yemen, from the place Himeir, he was called Abu Karab Aswad. When he came to Makkah and saw the Kaaba to two openings, he said, we cannot have this house with just simple openings. So he is the first one who built in wooden doors and made sure the openings were now closed by the doors and opened when they were needed. So let us now move from 200 years before Hijra, where the doors were now installed, to 18 years before Hijra. This was the time in Makkah when the clan of the Qureshi were in the seat of power. It is the year 605 AD. The prophet is 35 years old, so it is five years before the call of prophethood. Now Makkah and Kaaba, until today, it's lying in a valley. That means whenever it rains, it is always subjected to flooding. And those flooding in time caused a lot of damage to the walls of the Kaaba. So during this time, 18 years before Hijra, the walls were so damaged that they needed rebuilding. So what materials did the Qureshi use to rebuild the walls above the ground? They used the stones from the nearby mountains. Now every tribe wanted the honor of bringing the stones from the mountains to the Kaaba. So it was agreed that every tribe would go to a certain mountain, they would collect the stones and then they would bring it down. The second material that was used for the first time in the reconstruction of the walls of Kaaba was wood. The people in Makkah had reports that there was a Spanish ship which was wrecked on the west of Makkah, which is on the east coast of the Red Sea. So they went there and they bought the wood that they needed for the reconstruction. The third material is what we now call cement. They used mortar or cement, if you like, of the clay that was around and they mixed it with water. So we had the first masonry composite construction of the walls of the Kaaba using stone, wood, and mortar. And all this, the Qureshi had agreed, would be bought from lawful funds. There was gambling going on at the time, there was interest charge on the business, but the Qureshi had agreed that the money that was used to buy the materials would all be bought from lawful means. So how did they reconstruct the walls of the Kaaba? 
At the moment, the height of the wall was 4.3 meters. They doubled it to about 8.6 meters. That was the first change. And they started building the walls from the southern wall, 10 meters wide and going high to about 8.6 meters. And then they started building the eastern wall and the western wall moving towards the northern side. This originally was 15 meters. When they came to a distance of about 12 meters and each, each wall raising to a height of 8.6 meters, they realized they will be short of material. And they had no more funds available to go and buy any more material. So what they then decided was, we'll stop short at about 12 meters on the eastern and the western wall. We'll leave a gap of just about under 3 meters, so that would make the full original distance of 15 meters. And then whatever material they had left, they built a crescent around it, which is the shape that we see today. It's a shape of an arch, more or less a semicircular, but it is a crescent shape. But because of the limited material they had, they could not raise the height of this crescent to a full 8.6 meters. Now, records do not show to what height it was raised then, but presumably the height that was raised then is the same as it is now, which is about 1.3 meters. Now, during this reconstruction, the Prophet also took part in this reconstruction and the Prophet did not object to this reconstruction. In fact, he was seen when doing the tawaf, going round the walls, but not cutting through the crescent, what is called the hatim. He actually went around the crescent. And he did that also on his last hajj. And that is why until today, when we do the tawaf, it is only complete, not only around the three walls, but also around the crescent of hatim and not cutting through the crescent. That area of the crescent between the crescent and the northern wall is called Hijre Ismail. It is here where it is Lady Hajar who is buried, Prophet Ismail is buried, and it is also reported at the minimum 70 prophets are buried in this area. That is why it is a very holy precinct and during the time of Hajj, when people are allowed, they can come and pray within the crescent itself. When the walls were now built, the question arose now of who is going to place the black stone in the corner. Every tribe wanted the owner. They said, our chief will go and place that stone in its right place. So what was then decided was we cannot have every person doing it every time. So they decided that the following morning, the first person who walks through a particular gate will be given that honor. The following morning, it is the Prophet, His Holiness, who walks through that particular gate. And the Qureshi are now telling him, you have the honor of placing the black stone in its rightful corner. What the Prophet then does, he asks for a blanket and he puts the black stone on the blanket and he asks all the chiefs of the tribe to hold on to the edges of the blanket. So no tribe was excluded from this honor. It is then carried to the corner and then the Prophet himself lifts the black stone and puts it in the corner where it is now placed. What else did the Qureshi do in the reconstruction? The eastern door and the western doors were there. So what they now did was that there's a lot of casual traffic of people going from eastern door to western door because it was on the ground level. So to reduce the traffic, what they then did was they raised the eastern door to a height of about 2.25 meters from the ground. And that is exactly the position of the height that it is today. But on the western door, they sealed it. They did not want casual traffic growing from one wall to another. So that western door was now sealed. Imam Ali is now about five years old and it is through that western door where it cracked during the time of his birth when his mother Lady Fatima binti Asad had to go through. That door is now sealed. So now the ground level inside the Kaaba was below 2.25 meters. The doors was raised. Therefore, they decided also to raise the floor of the Kaaba inside to the same level as the door inside. So now, until today, the level of the door and the level of the floor inside the Kaaba is the same. 
The next thing the Qureshi did was that there was no roof at the time. So they now build a top roof on this 8.6 meters high wall. And they supported the roof on six columns. Now it's a different as we'll see later on, but at the time they supported it on six columns, presumably using the wood that they had at the time. The other thing they did was because of the rain. Now the rain was accumulating on the roof, so they actually put a pipe, and that pipe is there until today, but not of the style and the format that was put during the time of Quraysh. They put a pipe on the northern wall right at the top. That position of the pipe is the same as it is today, and that used to drain the water from the roof down to the ground. The next reconstruction occurred about 82 years after this one. And this occurred in the year 64 Hijra, 683 AD. The governor in Mecca at the time was a person called Abdullah Zubair. Three years after the tragedy of Karbala, the people of Medina and Mecca rose against the government of Yazid in Damascus. So Yazid sent an army first to Medina and then to Mecca to quash the rebellion. When the resistance in Medina was now brought under control, the two army officers, Muslim Aqaba and Hassin Namir, now moved towards Mecca. On the way, Muslim Aqaba dies, so Hassin Namir is now in charge. When they near the city of Mecca, they see that Mecca city boundary is very well defended. So what they then do is because it was a hilly area just outside, the soldiers get onto the mountains and they started throwing what we would call petrol bombs today. They started throwing petrol bombs at the Kaaba. The Kaaba was covered with a cloth which is called a kiswa, so that started burning. When the cloth had burnt, remember the construction of the Kaaba was stone and wood now. So when the cloth started burning, the wood started burning. So when the Kaaba walls had burnt down, Abdullah Zubair now in the year 64 Hijra had to reconstruct the walls. But he said, I have heard a hadith, a narration from the Prophet that said, if there is enough lawful funds available, I would have liked the Kaaba walls to go back to the dimensions of Ibrahim and Ismail, and I would like the doors raised back to the ground level, and also have the eastern door and the western door. So with this hadith in mind, Abdullah Zubair now reconstructs the Kaaba. He removes the crescent, the Hatim, he brings the rectangular area back to about 15 meters to 10 meters wide. And now the only difference he makes is this, he increases the height almost double now to 8.6 meters, which is what it was to 13 meters. Now just to give an idea, the height of the Kaaba today is about 14 meters. So during the time of the La Zubair, it was 13 meters high. What he also does is now he puts in another door inside the Kaaba. When you go through the eastern door on the right hand side, he builds another door inside and he builds wooden stairs which takes up to the roof. And he also creates an opening in the roof. That opening position is what we see today. He now also brings the eastern door down to the ground level and also opens up the western door down to the ground level. The roof also he reconstructs and he builds the roof now and it is supported now not by six columns but by three columns. The positions of the three columns during the time of Abdullah Zubair is exactly the same as it is today. At that time it was made out of timber or wood, now probably it is made out of reinforced concrete and then covered with a marble surrounding around it. So that was the reconstruction during the time of Abdullah Zubair. <laughs> Yeah.